Hi, this is Deborah Peters, and welcome back to The Deborah Peters Show. Thank you so much for joining me. I have this amazing show planned for you today. And before we get started, thank you for giving me a thumbs up when you like my videos. It really makes a difference to me. And thank you for commenting. I read all the comments. I personally respond. I don't have someone on my team responding. And so I would love to hear from you and to know what it is you're experiencing and what you're looking to create this year. And I will create more topics that will serve you as you go through the process of actualizing your goals and increasing the experiences in your life to another level. So I appreciate that. Thank you. All right. Today's show is all about praise. Do you wait and look for validation or praise from your boss, from your lover, from your friends, from your family, and then calibrate your worth based on that praise? Because that's what today's show is all about. I want to nip this in the bud for the very reason that, first of all, it's not necessary, and secondly, I'd like to share these tools with you so you can get into a greater place of self-empowerment. Develop that relationship with yourself so that you don't need that praise from other people. It's wonderful when it comes. Who doesn't like a compliment, right? But, and I say but, I don't often say but because you know it negates the very thing that comes before it in the sentence. I think in this case, it does have validity, but the problem with waiting for praise from others is that you set yourself up to hold yourself back. And right now, the most important decision you can make is to actually bring yourself forward, bring your gifts forward, bring your talents forward contribute to this world by just being you. For those of you that have been following me and watching my videos, you know I talk a lot about who you're being and this notion that who you're being comes before what you have and what you do or what you do and what you have. Who you're being is everything. And the way we've been programmed, perhaps, by society, maybe our parents growing up, is that, you know, you shouldn't be too full of yourself. You shouldn't be conceited. You, you shouldn't be arrogant. Like, these are the kinds of language patterns that have been provided to us and trained us to actually hold ourselves back. And this is the worst thing you can do to yourself. This is a really big year because it's the beginning of a new decade. And here we are right now, smack dab pretty much in the middle of January. This is your turning point. You know, there's a turning point many times in our lives where when we turn that corner, we never look back, we never go back to thinking the same thoughts, feeling the same way, uh, being with the same people. If there's ever a time to make that shift, to turn that corner, it's right now. And I wanna share a little bit of a personal story with you because the reason I'm cutting this particular show is two things. One, I see this all the time in clients, regardless, male, female, manager, <laughs> business development individual, marketing professional, the executive secretary, CEO, CFO, everyone suffers from it. And I use the word suffer because there's nothing more debilitating than not being able to praise yourself. Learning to praise yourself, 
regardless of the opinion of other people is truly the key to happiness. So if you're watching this and you find yourself looking to others for that validation, looking for others for that praise or that acknowledgement, this is the video for you. The other reason I'm cutting this video is because this was my background. This is where I started. I didn't, I wasn't always confident. I wasn't always articulate. Oh, I can remember times <laughs> when I would be in a situation or a meeting and I really wanted to express something and I just couldn't say it. You know, the words wouldn't come out. The feelings in my body, I was finding that were blocking me, were so intense that I could not articulate what I wanted. And it was because I had years and years and years of programming of not being enough, not being good enough, not being not fitting in. And I, you know, when I look back on my timeline, because I've done a lot of work on this, let me tell you, like this, this transition, this, this process of shifting into loving myself and not needing anyone to pat me on the back or encourage me to actually be my own best friend did not come easy. It was, it was quite the journey. And there's, there's times where uh, those feelings get triggered, but they don't get triggered like they used to. They don't overwhelm me. They don't keep me from asking for what I want. They don't keep me from having boundaries anymore. They don't keep me from expressing what I would like to express. Before they were just like such overwhelming feelings in my body that my ability to the f ask for the flip side, which was what I wanted instead of this negative feeling was just so impossible for me. And what's interesting with this, you know, I, I talk a lot about reflection. So over the years, Back in the day when I was doing personal breakthrough sessions with people, I would spend somewhere between whew, like 25 to 30 some hours just working with one individual, facilitating a personal breakthrough session, giving them the tools and walking them through the process of repatterning every negative emotion and every limiting belief. And what was phenomenal about that is pretty much every person that I attracted as a client was dealing with the, my issues on their, in their own way. So <laughs> I had loads and loads and loads and loads of opportunity to really look in the mirror and identify what I was doing to perpetuate this. You see, back before we understood this, and, and maybe some therapists and coaches still do it the old school way, but I use new mind tech that I've actually created. And it's a very different approach. So initially it was about, let's find the root cause to the problem and let's root it out and get rid of that bugger and then you'll never have that problem again and nothing could be further from the truth. Because what you focus on expands. And so if you're focusing on finding the root cause, you're going to find millions and millions and millions, endless, infinite layers of negative emotions and limiting beliefs. So how does this relate to self-praise? Well, it relates to self-praise because two things. If you're waiting for that pat on the back from your boss, or your friend, or your lover, or acknowledgement from your children that you're good, that you're amazing, that you do a good job, you might find yourself very unhappy 
and you might actually find yourself creating more thoughts of lack, low self-esteem. You see what I'm saying? You actually perpetuate the issue. So esteem is, you know, when you look up the word esteem, esteem is self-love. It's the ability to love yourself regardless of your circumstances, regardless of the people that surround you, regardless of your bank balance, regardless of your sales volume, to actually really truly cultivate this well of self-love that you tap into as a resource, okay? Now, your boss may or may not be able to praise you. I've worked with a lot of teams in a lot of industries and many different size companies and sometimes bosses just don't have the capacity to acknowledge the performers in their business. Sometimes team leaders, and I know what you're thinking, you're assuming, well, if they're a team leader, they've got it all together and it's like, the corporate world does not work that way. A lot of people are in positions of authority that do not belong there. They don't have the skill set. Some are great and some aren't. So what you have to really understand is what you're truly dealing with. If the person that is managing your team or is the leader has low self-esteem or they need external validation, or maybe they're narcissistic, or perhaps they've been in an abusive background, or you just don't know what's going on in people's personal lives and where they're coming from. So it's always good to take all of this with a grain of salt and to actually cultivate that praise within you. Because again, what you focus on expands. And when you build up yourself, then regardless whether you get that praise from outside of you, you foster this ability to be unstoppable. You foster self-love. And you're able to take full responsibility for every aspect of your being every aspect of your life. What is being responsible anyway? Responsibility is just cultivating the ability to respond effectively. So the more responsibility you're able to take on in your job, in your life, really is just cultivating that inner power to be able to be responsive to whatever it is that you take on. And not everything comes as a bouquet of flowers. <laughs> Sometimes people come, people come and, and situations come and they're all broken up and they are cracking at the seams and they are suffering greatly and they're falling apart. So when you're building your company, when you're in a relationship with anyone, I don't care if you want to label it as a business relationship or you label it as a personal relationship or a lover or a parent or an offspring. Every relationship has an opportunity to flourish and to grow. You want to look at what the relationship dynamics are and most importantly, get out of this space of thinking it's all about you and what they're saying is because you're right or wrong and the way they're treating you is because you're good or bad. This is the key right here. This is the key that turns your entire reality on its head. Rather than look at the way they are being as being something about you, I would like to have you start looking at the way they are being and what they are seeing to be everything about them. Because people that don't love themselves can't praise. People that aren't happy can't find the goodness in situations or life. 
You walk down the street, what do you notice? Do you notice the gum on the sidewalk or do you notice the beautiful sky above your head? Do you notice the rickety car driving by or do you notice the flow of people going about their business and all of the abundance that that creates? You can criticize or you can praise and your ability to criticize or praise another is your ability to praise or criticize yourself. And so coming from that place of self-love is the key. So here's a couple tools. First off, going to bed at night, instead of reviewing the day in terms of all the stuff that didn't work and what you need to fix tomorrow. Go to bed and say things to yourself like, today was really an amazing day, even if it wasn't, okay? You, you, you want to convince yourself that you're doing better, okay? So maybe the day was awful, but you can say to yourself, you know what, today was not the greatest day, but I feel better because I am getting better. And as I get better, I create better. I respond better. I become more effective. I feel good about myself regardless how today turned out. I love myself. I gave my best today and I'm constantly moving forward and I'm really excited about all the possibilities tomorrow because I get to get up in the morning and have a brand new fresh start. You don't have to do anything, you get to. So start praising yourself, find things about yourself that you like and start cultivating that. You know, I have a cool, I love the way I walk. I have a cool walk, you know. I love the way when I walk down the street, I look people in the eye and I smile at them. I do this all the time. Yesterday I was walking down the street and there were several people I met I smiled at every one of them and I looked them straight in the eye. There was probably five or six people and they were all walking solo. So they came sort of like one after the other. Do you know that every single one of those people, the minute they made eye contact with me, they looked at the ground, every one of them. One actually had this surprise look like, Oh my God, you smile, I don't know you. And then they looked away. So build yourself up, build others up, bring forward that praise you give yourself and praise other people. Find the greatest part about someone and say it to them. You know, when I was a little kid, this never happened in my family. My family always found what was wrong with something. At least that's my perception, because after hearing it from so many in my family repeatedly, I started to believe that that's all we did was criticize. And I remember one time I was visiting a family member with my dog. I used to have this beautiful old English sheepdog and I found a groomer in the town where my family lived and I was staying with them. And this groomer, this dog groomer, specialized in holding the sheepdogs. So I took my dog. She had the most amazing grooming session. And when I picked her up, wow. I mean, she looked like a show dog. She was groomed to perfection. I took her back to my family's home. And they stood there looking at her, this person, and guess what she said they didn't get the stain out of her beard and i was like wow this dog could go win grand champion at westminster right now she's just so perfect and you find the one little tiny thing that didn't come completely perfect so please stop doing that to yourself Stop finding the things about you that aren't perfect or don't work. And the same thing with your team. 
Find what your team is amazing at. I could go on and on, couldn't I? The bottom line is to really learn to praise. Praise, praise, praise. And as you do this and you get good at it, because everything you can get good at through repetition, remember 3721, watch everything in your life change. Your body will get healthier, your finances will grow, your team will perform higher. Who knows? Maybe you'll even manifest some massive new income from something like your wife or your husband will love you more or if you're single that amazing individual will show up that also also loves themselves all right so that's my message for today and i look forward to seeing you on monday have a blessed weekend everyone this is deborah peters ciao